Hello, uh, my name is uh, Brant Hunt. Uh, today is the um, 15th day of May, 2022. What I want to talk to you about is um, a book that's going to be a, a, what I call a short reading of uh, Secret Societies and Psychological Warfare by Michael A. Hoffman II. Uh, this book was done, I think, in 2001. Actually, it was reprinted in 2001. It's actually started in 1989. So this has been a long time ago. Okay. But 89 would be 11 years before 20, 2000. And then now we're going to be 2022. So this is done approximately 33 years ago. I want to just share with you the contents and what he talks about. He doesn't, this book is basically, um, like snippets, it's at each area. It's like a small chapter or a page or two that are snippets. And so he talks about this here, and I'm just going to share this with you. Um, from 007 to 2001, Nature over Gnosis, G-N-O-S-I-S. -S. Uh, flattery, first principle of mind control. Satan is the age, I'm sorry, is the eighth of God. Introducing the double mind, the occult, in Protestantism and Catholicism, the bovine herd, church fathers, perfecting creation, scientism, a form of black magic, ceremony, psychodrama, mind control and revelation, mystical, hypocrisy, truth or consequences, Jack the Lodge brother, son of Uncle Sam, ritual murder and mental magic, double initiative murders, the video, video drone, Angel of Light, Episodic Revelation, and Lone Nut Syndrome. Consent is crucial to the process. Trinity Sight, Alchemy uh, Ritual Murders, Rosemary's Babies, Lunacy, Showtime in the Video Drone, The Golem, Rebuilding the Temple of Herod. Everyday Miracle Divine, Statements of John Quincy Adams, Through a Hoffman Lens Dartley, Wired to the Data Hive, The Combine Matrix, Profiling the FBI Unibomb Charade, Dark Side of a Bad Moon, A Rocket Man, and Something Wicker This Way Comes. So uh, this book has uh, been around for a while. Uh, I bought it probably, I don't know, probably 15 years ago, as far as I recollect. So let's uh, let's just lead to something here. And what I'm going to read from is what they call um, excerpts from, basically not excerpts, but actually from about a two-page deal here. And I think it's summations of what really is going on in a way. From 007 to 2001. But we confess and witness openly that it shall first happen that the stone shall rise and offer their services. This is from Rosicrucian Manifest, based upon 1615. The occult cryptopathy processes the group mind of the masses mainly through psychodrama. The alchemy and Rosicrucian command dogmas were literally worse in the course of receiving the establishment reports and accounts of Jack the Ripper, the Hillside Strangler, son of San, Sam, and the Unabomber. A mental virus is implanted in many precipitates. This is a, this is a form of psychological warfare. The hypodermic needle in this case is nothing more startling than a campfire story, only the campfire is the crackling electrical current of a television and the story is of our extension. The narrative, the plot, the characters and the symbolism all constitute the imprinting that is one of the highest functions of ceremony, serial, serial murder. There is a dark poetry to ritual murder, murder to twilight language. And let me say something with this twilight language. He has also produced his most recent book here. Um, Michael Hoffman is called Twilight Language. So what does twilight language mean here? In the secret societies, twilight language was advertised as the adamant, that is Adam language, 
the language of Adam learned from God in Edom, the key to divine knowledge. Example, the passages pertaining in the testimony about Enoch by the Ethiopian priests. This is written back in 1553. So, back to the reading here. There is a dark poetry to ritual murder to twilight language, to the fantastic conversion known as coincidence. Interesting, the word coincidence. Most conspiracy researchers miss these. The best investigator of the occult or of almost anything else has a childlike sense of curiosity and wonder about seemingly mundane things, such as John Stilgo, professor of landscape history at Harvard University, in his book, Outside Lies Magic rights of the ordinary in our lives. The whole con continuation of wild and artificial things in nature ecosystem as modified by people over the centuries. Hmm, interesting. That's that's a that's a interesting statement there. The built environmental layers, the environment sorry, the built environment layer over layers. Take it in and quickly it becomes the theater that intrigues Fascinates and above all, expands any mind focused on it. Outside lies only ordinary space open to any casual explorer willing to find the extraordinary. Outside lies unprogrammed awareness that at times becomes directly serendipity. The per, the preps, sorry the preservation into adulthood of childhood inherent appreciation of the true magic, which may be found in what is generally dismissed as the ordinary everyday world, was expressed with childlike glee by the born again Christian Christian mystic Thomas, I'll spell this name, T-R-A-H-E-R-N-E, Troheron in the 17th century. Your enjoyment of this world is never right till every morning you awake in heaven. See yourself in your father's palace and look upon the skies. The earth and the air as celestial joys, having such a reverent esteem for all as if you were among the angels. Till the sea itself floweth in your veins, till you are clothed with the heavens and crowned with the stars, infinitely beloved of Almighty God. British intelligence asset Arthur C. Clarke spelled with an E at the end, through the command dogma embedded in his immense influential science fiction work, Childhood's End, attempts through self-fulfilling futurism, futurism to make irreparable, sorry, to make inedible the end of serendipity and wonder. The childlike mind. I'm saying that. That's not what's here after sufficiently processing by modern technology and mental viruses. The virus embedded within the ritual murders of John F. Kennedy and the victims of Unabama, Unabom are in the trickery, punning lingo of the hermetic fraternity Camelot. Once and future tales processing the intention of self-fulfilling prophecy, what I term inedibilism. This inedibilism is dissimulated within literacy and in cinematic representations, sometimes as part of the gendry, genre, I should say, and imaginary of science fiction. It's amazing, I'll say this, it's amazing how popular science fiction has become probably in the last 70 years. Let's go on here as I continue on. The virus containing this Mimi Contagious idea pattern infects the host with the sense that it is. These are the key things that's going on right now. Okay. And we have the opportunity to see these things if we are aware. Useless to resist central and establishment control. So it is a, it is a way of actually defeating the enemy. And the United States Army has used this weapon, uh, especially in the Middle East, but has used it elsewhere a way of actually destroying um, your enemy's troops without even a, without a fight. Continue. Or is it a, or it presents a counterculture alternate to such control, which is actually a counterfeit. 
covertly imaginating from the establishment itself that the blackening or what we call the pollution of Earth is as an unavoidable as entropy. See, these, these is, this is what's going on here. This is what people don't understand. This is a, a script. It's a way of defeating you uh, before you, you, you just get drowned and you just say, I, I give up. I, I don't want to fight anymore. I just want to live in my own, you know, I just want to live in my own cocoon. And I don't mean it in a, in a way, uh, it, it's a way that humanity is, um, you know, in a way that humanity is giving up on itself and who it is. Doesn't understand that they are indeed children of God. You see That extension, or their word, evolution, that's the key word here, folks, evolution, the whole idea, um, word utopia, is actually there. It, it, that's, they use that word as utopian. Look at the what's even planted now. Go back and even look at the 50s on television or 60s. Oh, we're going to have cars that are actually going to be flying in the sky, such and such. Well, that's that was in the 1950s and 60s. Well, 1960 to 2020 is 60 years, 70 years. Nothing has actually happened, folks, except there's no utopia. There's a dystopia. It's the, it's the, other, it's the opposite of what they're saying. So uh, go back to it. that extension or their words simply is the evolution of the species. Human beings is an animal. The last thing here that the re-inhabitation re of the earth by the old gods based upon Genesis 6, 4 is our stellar scientifically scientific destiny. So my point here is trying to explain to you what uh, Michael Hoffman is saying here simply is, is that. It's a it's a enormous um, way of defeating you, and also with the like for example, um, like what happened yesterday. Supposedly, someone ten people got killed in Buffalo. Okay, uh, you know all this enormous pressure, uh, all these stories ramp up. Simply is here's here's another one. Yeah, I don't pay attention a whole lot with media, but I thought this was really interesting. Uh, you know, they talk about Putin's wife, not his wife. His girlfriend somehow has been caught in England. And I'm like, what's that got to do with anything? And then they share a story. Well, Putin may have cancer now, such and such. And the whole idea simply is that Ukraine, whatever this is, another psyop. Uh, for example, this is let me explain this by the psyop. The United States is supposedly be uh, a democracy, uh, is fighting for what we call truth and free enterprise and and you being free, supposedly. But see, the interesting point simply is that we would see China and Russia being completely anti that, as we've been told, you see, when reality simply is, is that we still, we still have relationships with these countries. Now, this is, this is what blows me up, because it's all about economics also. This is all pivotal to economics, you see. So this whole thing that's going on in Ukraine, which is actually the guy who's actually supposedly the president there is a script. Uh, he's, they state he is a, a actor and he is an actor. It's right in your face. He's not actually the leader of the country. He is a actor and he's being played by a particular person. And um, I don't know, remember who the person is, but he's been in acting. He's done acting also before. He's played different roles. This is what's going on here is that these people are playing roles. The media, which is controlled by them, that's completely controlled by them, give, give all the whole thing with camera, everything, video, whatever, upon these things, and you buy into that, which is a classic psyop also. They're creating news. They're, that's what I mean, simply. It's, oh, what about uh, Putin's girlfriend? Who cares? Who really cares? You know? But this is what they do. Uh, and they also promote a lot of what I would call hardly anything is positive anymore. It's almost enormously negative, anti-human in all aspects. 
like the word is, you know, we the extension means simply is extension, not extension, extension that is doing away with life. They use that as evolving or evolution, that man is evolving such and such. And this is how people are seduced in believing, hey, you know what? You know, we are getting smarter when reality simply is, no, we're not. No, we're not. No, we're not. Meaning simply is that we know the right answer or we think we know the right answer, but we can no longer think or have a logical mind to be able to come to a right recognition of what is true and what is false. That's what they've done with education. Uh, Charlotte Iserby spoke of that in, in her life, and she's passed away back in February, that she spoke of simply is it was a way of dumbing down kids. And that's, that's part of the whole deal here is what they've done. And then what we call what's happened uh, to, what's the word I'm trying to think of? You know, what's, you look at, you go back and look at something here. You can go back to the late 1800s and early 1900s. You'll get a grammar book or it's what they call a test of something. And reality simply is those tests are enormously hard for all of us to you know what they're talking about. Now we're talking about over 125 years ago, 135 years, so to supposedly. And reality says simply is I can't do what these kids used to do. In high school, I couldn't pass. And I'm being legitimate here. I'm being honest with you. They have seduced us and made us, oh, yeah, we know all these things about a lot of stuff that doesn't mean anything. Like, for example, let's just say this real quickly. Uh, yeah, I know uh, when I was a kid, I was caught up in what we call sports, and I enjoy sports. But I could tell you all the statistics of these players. You see, that was my world. You see, that was where I was fixated on. So I could tell you, oh, well, Bart Starr or this such and such running back or this wide receiver caught such and such many passes. It was like, yeah, I know that. But that doesn't, that doesn't, that has nothing to pertain to life. You see, think about that. And we know, for example, in recent deals here that for the, the issue of sports, this is really critical to think about. The games are fixed. The games are fixed, folks, especially in the pro sports, enormously. They are actually, they're picked to be this way. They're not, they're no longer out there. The best team wins. No, it's about money. It's all about that because there's gambling going on. So then naturally you being naturally the gambling goes on. This means simply is <clears throat> we must help whoever these people are. So, you know, that simply is that money is coming from such and such, you see. And so that means simply is they will support that type of, you know, program. So I wanted to show you. This is the uh, the class. This is a picture of it, the, the book here. And it's interesting. Simply is one of the things. Simply is that um, all kinds of things are done on purpose. Like for example, uh, Truth and Consequences, New Mexico is actually on the thirty third degree. Okay, thirty so third degree, and the supposedly death of John F. Kennedy. I don't believe he was actually murdered at all it was done on television to bring the greatest influence or the psychological effect upon people you know i don't know if it was live because i was only three years old but the point of is if someone's older they could tell me if it was live or not but that was done and it was scripted and it's actually near that particular area where it is is actually 33 degrees also very close to that that's just two examples of what they do. They also simply is, what about the timing of these things? In other words, what, what took place at that time period? Da, da, da. Those numbers mean such and such. Okay. And one thing else I'll share with you here is that um, way for you to understand simply is you must be above this approach. You must not let this uh, entangle you. You must rise above because what they want you to be is in fear. And fear itself is the lowest chakra in some ways, we would call it, the lowest point of man. Instead of actually loving others, he's in fear. And that's what they want. And then they want you to, quote, unquote, create that more of that fear. That's why this is all being done so that you will reproduce that not only in your life. And then basically you will you give up. You, you, you say, what's the point in living? You know, why fight these people? 
You see, when reality simply is that all of us are far more than they are. They are the few. That's why they play different spots. They play in acting. They're also involved with what we would call music. You see, musicians. Why was there, a, a, you know, think about this for me. I remember in the 80s, which I was involved in college at that point and was involved in music, such and such, not, pl not playing anything, such and such, but listening to it. And it seemed to have a positive impact, okay? But once that changed, that changed the next decade. It seems as though the, the genre of the music changes from every 10 years or less than that, you see. Okay? Think about that. Why is that done for? Because it produces a result, you see. I'm not saying that even the 80s are good because I look at the videos nowadays and I see... What are these guys having makeup makeup on? You know, this was this was when the MTV got involved with showing these bands in, in makeup and showing all this stuff in either not in live but in concert, so to speak. Maybe it is in live, but the point I'm not gonna digress too much more. But the point simply is is that I was like I was completely enthralled with that and not seeing basically what I saw, what I see now is that these guys had makeup on, these 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 artists, these musicians, you see. And they know that music has an enormous effect upon the young people. But I noticed simply is the music changed in the 90s and we call, I call it rap music or, or I don't know if you call it grunge or whatever, but the point simply is, is that it's so negative. It's, uh, it's, it's a towards what I would call uh, the, the gang like type of rap is simply is anti-woman, anti-woman, she's a bitch. She's this type of person, such and such. And they run that down, and that's what people expect of her. And yet, that's a war against the females, you see. It's like today that there's a war against the male, you see. It's, it's taking place simply right before you. Like, for example, uh, there's an uh, advertisement. You go back and look at Calvin Klein. You look at, uh, you know, uh, 20 years ago, maybe 25 years ago. It's a, it's a woman who's a, a very attractive woman, such and such. It's very feminine, so to speak. I'm not saying it's great, but I'm just saying it's somewhat feminine. But that's all trans. That's all changed now. It's been completely changed and reversed now. Completely changed. And I just want you to know that this simply is that as for young people or younger than I, they need to see these things because I'm 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 62 years old and I'm trying to share with you what I see. Or what I see is being plastered on television. I don't even have a television. I really don't want one at all. But the point simply is how you're being seduced and you're buying into this whole psychological warfare. And the warfare is a spiritual warfare against you. Okay? So I appreciate you uh, listening. Uh, I see that I've got some comments from uh, Indigroove. Thank you, Indigroove, for your uh, comments. Uh, AP and Reuters are own. Viacom is a family business dictatorship running media. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, Casual Mining was here earlier. I appreciate you listening. Um, the key is simply is, is this. This is a war. This is a spiritual war. And it's critical for you to understand simply is that you need to be as independent as possible as you can be. In other words, be self-sufficient, not being dependent upon them. Because this is leading to a form of a prison planet, lack of a better word, a prison electronically that you will not be able to even buy or sell. And this is all scripted. Also, one more thing. It's also scripted to do with this with the Bible. They, they see they spoke this in Revelation, see, and they are scripted that a long time ago and implanted that into your mindset. When that's not what should be happening, but you're going along with the script, you see? And you're creating what they want you to create, which is a dystopia, not a utopia. Thank you for listening and wish you a great day. Appreciate your comments, too.